Welcome everyone to the Creator Tech Connect series. For people who have uh, joined you for the very first time uh, to the Creator Tech Connect series, let me give you a small introduction. The Creator Tech Connect series is a month on month free webinar that we conduct where we concentrate mainly on the technical nuances that are there in the Creator platform. Hi, I'm Sai Kumar Muralidharan. I'll be the trainer for today. I'm part of the Zoho Creators training team. Before we get started into the session, there are few housekeeping rules to be followed throughout the session. All attendees will be on a mute at all times. Please post your questions in the questions tab so that it is easier for us to answer your questions and we won't be missing out any questions as well. A recording of this session will be sent to all the uh, registrants so that you can uh, revisit uh, the sessions that uh, we are delivering. So, and please participate in the polls and surveys that are being conducted. Now, we have a roadshow that uh, we, are, we have planned to uh, run uh, in the coming month uh, from October uh, 8 uh, to 9, which is 8th and 9th. Uh, we will have a roadshow in London where uh, we will be uh, training uh, the participants uh, to build applications. You will have hands-on experience. Uh, members from our team will travel to London and we will have a roadshow in London. Right? We will also have roadshows in Berlin and Madrid on October 14th and 15th uh, in Berlin and uh, October 22nd and 23rd in Madrid. You can scan the QR code to register if you are nearby any of these places. And if you can participate, it would be great. Uh, you can come up and uh, we'll be uh, training you all in Zoho Creator. You can build applications uh, with us. You can get hands-on uh, training and you will have our trainers present in the premises in London, Berlin and Madrid in the below uh, dates that we have given. I co trainers will also sharing will also be sharing the links for the same in the chat section as well. Uh, you can save the links, share it to your uh, colleagues or people who you might think will be interested in joining uh, the roadshow in the three locations that we have mentioned over here. Thank you all. Now let's get into the series that we have planned. Uh, to take for the next three months. Now we have selected the topic of Zoho directory with Zoho creator as a series. Now, when you have Zoho creator where you develop applications uh, on top of the uh, platform, you need to maintain users for all these applications that you are building, right? Now with Zoho creator, you can maintain all these users. Now, what if you have uh, other applications that uh, you have to maintain in your organization, right? Now, in that case, uh, you will be using Zoho directory for it. Now, throughout the uh, three-part series, we will be talking in detail about how Zoho directory uh, helps us in maintaining users uh, with Zoho creator and other applications as well. Now, in this three-part series, we will be covering uh, in uh, detail uh, with the part one where uh, we'll be talking about managing users uh, and applications in Zoho Creator with Zoho Directory. And in part two, we will be uh, covering the domains, controls and security in Zoho Creator using Zoho Directory. In part three, we'll be uh, covering the directory stores that is available in Zoho directory and how you can maintain the device authentications that you are providing uh, to your users using Zoho directory as well. Now, these three parts is separated by three different uh, sessions that we would be conducting. Now, we are in the part one of the three part series. Now, in this session, we'll be seeing about managing users and applications in Zoho creator with Zoho directory. Now let's see what is in store for us uh, today. We'll start with the introduction. Then we'll move on to users in Zoho creator, where we will discuss about uh, who are users in Zoho creator. What are the different users segments that are available in Zoho creator? Then uh, we'll move on to adding and managing those users uh, inside uh, the Zoho creator platform. 
we'll also understand users and roles in the perspective of zoho directory and we'll talk about conditional assignments in zoho directory and how that plays a crucial role in maintaining uh, the users and it it will also uh, explain to us how uh, you can uh, maintain the process of having different applications uh, being maintained in a single place we'll have live demonstrations where uh, we will be covering so creator and so directory and at the end we will have few key pointers that you need to note while you are working with so directory and zoho creator now you have different stakeholders that will be using uh, the applications that you are building in zo creator platform or when you are going to use any application you would always think about who are the stakeholders who will be using those applications right now these stakeholders are also called as users now these users can be put into different brackets depending upon our business that we are running or the customers business that we are trying to cater right now with regards to uh, zoho creator let's see who are users how have uh, we segmented users in zoho creator now users in zoho creator are segmented into two halves one is the internal users who are organizational users who are part of the organization and then we have the external users external users are uh, users who uh, we give out access uh, to customer portals where uh, you have uh, uh, users who are not directly part of the organization but they do play a major role uh, in the day to day activities like customers uh, like vendors who can be assigned as external users now let's go ahead and see uh, in detail about these users let's start with the internal users now the internal users is Uh, segregated into three one is the super admin where uh, when you open an account in zo creator the user who opens an account uh, in zo creator with their email address becomes the super admin right and that super admin can give access uh, uh, can give permission and add another admin inside so the user who the super admin adds can become uh, the admin as well or the super admin can define who the admin can be the admin will have all access to the uh, applications and the platform options that are available like the super admin and then we have the solution specific users now as you know in zo creator we have uh, three types of solutions that you can build right now one is applications another one is bi and analytics another one is integrations now you can segregate the internal users into the solutions that you are building if you are uh, building applications you have application users and you have developers who develop the applications uh, inside the platform right now both these users are also in internal users who are specific to the solution that we are building and then you have bi and analytics now users can use the bn analytics live or when you create multiple workspaces for your bn analytics uh, you can have the workspace admin defined and that person can maintain the uh, workspace that is being created then we have the integration flows now with the integration flows you can enable or disable the integration flows that you are creating now this is the segment of segments that are there for the internal users now let's discuss about the external users in zoho creator the external users are also called as the zoho creator's portal users and these uh, portal users can be given uh, different permission sets uh, which can be uh, assigned and uh, they can be given access to the different parts of the application according to our business requirement in zo creator we have customer portal where you can give access to external stakeholders and uh, those external stakeholders can be given dedicated portals they will be able to access uh, applications that are being shared to them they can submit data now the external stakeholders can be vendors customers 
who might be who you might be interacting on a regular basis but they are not part of your organization you also have interns who might be working for just 3 months 6 months so you can give out an external uh, portal so that they can go ahead and uh, use the customer portal for a short period of time and then uh, they will be moving on right now that we have seen about the internal stakeholders and uh, sorry the internal users and the uh, external uh, users uh, let's go ahead into the live demonstration and uh, let us see how uh, the uh, users work inside the platform now towards our left we have uh, develop deploy and manage over here right we have develop deploy and manage now under manage in zo creator we have users right now, when you click on users, this is where you'll be able to maintain the users of uh, the platform. Now, if you want to add users, you'll be able to add users uh, from this tab over here, right? Now, in the top right corner, you have an option to add user. In the middle, uh, you will have a list of all the users uh, that are being added to the uh, uh, added to this account, which is uh, my test account which is uh, psychmar.ms that i have locked in now when i add a user over here i have uh, the uh, details that i need to provide now in the details that i need to provide i have to give out the application names that i am going to associate the user with the roles that i am going to assign for that application and i also need to define the permission set for this user now, where will I be able to do this? Now, these roles and permission sets are specific to the applications that uh, we are building in the platform. Now, that is the reason you need to get into the solutions and inside the application is where uh, you can create different permission sets and roles. And once you create the permission sets and roles for the application, you can define uh, those uh, parameters for the users that you are adding inside. Now, let's get into an application that I have built, which is the manufacturing application. Towards our left, you have uh, the modules that are available, which is the inventory management, the production planning, quality control, supply chain, and the production floor management. Now, with this, uh, I can manage uh, uh, the manufacturing uh, unit, right? Now, if I have to add uh, different permissions, roles uh, for this application, I need to get into the edit mode of the application. In the top right corner, uh, you can click on edit this application. And in the top, I have uh, the option design, workflow and settings, right? I'll click on settings and I have the option permissions over here right now under permissions i have user permissions now i will click on user permission and this is where uh, you have uh, three major options one is permissions where i can define permission sets then i have uh, roles where i can define different roles and different hierarchies and then we have the data sharing rules that i can give now let's go uh, the tabs one by one first let's start with the permission set now you have uh, the uh, read and write permission set uh, which is created by default. Now I have created the production head uh, permission set over here, right? I can go ahead and create more permission sets by adding permission over here in the top right corner. And here I can provide uh, the name of uh, the permission set. Over here I'll provide the name as quality control head and i'll copy this over here as well and now once i give out a, the name for the permission set i need i can click on this expand option and this would give me the options of api and security permissions that i can control for the permission set that i'm going to assign for this application now i can create multiple permission sets right now, according to which users or which set of users that I'm going to assign to, I can or roles that I'm going to assign to, I can create uh, the uh, permission sets accesses. Now, over here, I can enable or disable the API access. 
I can also show or hide the PII data, which is nothing but the personally identifiable information like your uh, social security number, your uh, passport uh, number and all these informations which are uh, personally identifiable. This can be shown or hidden for this permission set that we are creating. We also have the option to show or hide the EPHI data, which is nothing but uh, the electronically health information that we are capturing, which is the protected health information. Now, if you want to uh, now hide the uh, electronically protected health information, like uh, different uh, ailments that you are capturing when a user fills the form, all these can be shown or hidden according to uh, the permission according to the permission set that you are creating and here i can set permissions for different modules now since i am creating a permission set for the quality control head i can give out the uh, access to uh, the module quality control management right now i'll click on uh, access i'll click on view over here and i'll click on quality control and i'll click on edit option where uh, the user uh, will be able to edit if this permission set is assigned to that uh, user and I, the the permission set users will also have an option to delete uh, the entries that are being made now when you click on this more option you have uh, options to import uh, data you can uh, export or print uh, the values or records that are entered uh, inside the form you can uh, view all data you can modify all data and uh, you also can uh, create new reports as well and you can read or write comments now again this is uh, this can be defined according to the permission set that you are creating and then you have the field permissions you can click on field permissions and uh, this would give out the option of uh, the visibility of different fields inside the uh, inside the module that you have selected now we had selected the quality control management right now i have a different uh, fields that are associated with that module i can hide or uh, enable this field and if i want the field to be visible i can check this box if i do not want uh, the data to be captured i can just uncheck this box and click on done over here right now, once this is done, I can click on save and a new permission gets added over here. And like that for roles, you can set out a role hierarchy. Now, as default, you already will have the CEO. You can assign new roles by clicking on this uh, plus option over here. Right. And you also can go ahead and add new roles in the top right corner. When I click on add a uh, role, I can add a role as a vice president who reports to the CEO and I can give out a detailed description of uh, the permissions that I'm going to give. Uh, what is the role of uh, the uh, vice president? And then I have an option to share data with peers. Now, when you have multiple people reporting to a single person, uh, those people will be called as peers right now if you want to share data with your uh, peers who are reporting to the same person you can share data with peers by checking this box over here right now i'll click on save now you can see we have a new role that we have added now you can go ahead expand this further as well according to uh, your uh, company's hierarchy or your organization's hierarchy you also can have the data sharing done where you can add uh, new uh, rules. And over here, uh, you need not uh, just ca control the data with just peers, right? You can go ahead and uh, define who uh, should share uh, data uh, to which roles or which users. Now I can go ahead and uh, share I can go ahead and name uh, the rule as, uh, let's say I can, I'll name it as SHAR rule for executives and what form am I going to uh, give permission for? I'm going to select the inventory management. Now I can share records from uh, roles, roles and subordinates or users. I'll select roles and here 
and select uh, records from a vice president can be shared to the CEO. Right now, the level of access can be read and write or read only. And I'll click on save over here. Now we have a data sharing that has been added for this module over here. Uh, the details can be shared uh, from the vice president and it can be shared to the CEO. Right now, you can define uh, this uh, under the data sharing option. Now that we have uh, defined uh, the permission sets, roles, also the data sharing. Uh, if you are going to add a new user inside to give out the permission sets and roles that you have created, you need to get into the uh, manage section and inside that you have the users, right? I'll click on users. And let's try adding a new user. In the top right corner, I have add user. I click on add user and let's try adding a user, Abhinaya KG. And I'll add the email address over here as abinia.kg at zootest.com. Uh, I can send a notification over here when I check this box. I can also access integration flows if, uh, if I want to. Now over here, if this user uh, needs to be provided uh, access uh, to the integration flows, I can enable or disable it. Now, if I want to provide uh, the application access, I can provide the application access as a user or as a developer. Now, in this demonstration, let's provide it as a user. I'll click on manufacturing application and I'll click on uh, the uh, roles that we had defined, right? Now, when I click on select, you have CEO, which is the default role and you have the vice president that we created just now. I'll click on vice president and then you have uh, the Permission sets that uh, we had created, which is the quality control head. I'll select the quality control head. And then underneath, you also have options to select multiple applications. Now, a user can be uh, given uh, different roles for different applications, and they can be assigned different permission sets for different applications that they are given access to. Now, you can provide... Uh, multiple applications for a single user and you also uh, can add the uh, BIN analytics workspace as well over here. Now, once you add the workspace uh, and the applications as users, you just need to click on add user over here in the bottom right corner. Once you click on add user, the user will get added over here in the uh, dash uh, in the uh, all users tab over here. Now you just click on uh, Abhinaya KG and you can see the details of the applications that they are assigned to, which is the manufacturing application. We have the role and the permission, which is the quality control head. With BI and analytics, you have the workspace name and the user type that is mentioned over here. Now we have seen how uh, you can add the permission sets and uh, roles inside the application. And we also saw how you can add a user in uh, the Zo Creator platform and assign the permission sets that you have defined inside an application, right? Now let's get into uh, the uh, presentation and let's go ahead and learn more about Zoho Directory. Now Zoho Directory is a place where uh, you can manage uh, users and employees who are part of your organization in a single place. Now, you will be able to uh, have full access to all the organizational users information and you'll be able to maintain the uh, user information, the applications that are being given access to, to the users in a single place. Just imagine uh, an organization where uh, you are using uh, more than five to 10 applications and you need to manage all the users who are using different applications, right? Now, in that case, Zoho directories plays a major role where in a single place, you'll be able to maintain all the admin related activities. Now, it also ensures uh, the uh, data being updated across different domain controllers as well. And not only uh, data transfer or uh, maintaining the applications, you can also assign different security policies for uh, the applications that uh, you are assigning to, to different uses. 
now depending upon your organizational uh, requirements or the options that are available you can go ahead and assign different security policies to the users that you are adding inside uh, your organization in zoho directory now let's understand uh, the users and roles in zoho directory and the user types now let's start with the user types we have the pending user wherein uh, if a user is being added uh, from an unverified domain uh, that user becomes uh, a pending user and he or she will be given uh, access uh, to the um, uh, to uh, access to the applications once uh, they confirm uh, with uh, the events once they accept the invitation that is being sent now once they accept the invitation they are the confirmed users now if you have a verified uh, domain and you add uh, that uh, user as from the verified domain those people become confirmed users as well you also have external users where you can assign to different applications manage roles in those applications for the external users that you are giving access to to different applications then you have user actions now with user actions whenever you are adding users there are different ways by which you can add the users inside zoho directories now let's go through some of the options that are available now you can add user wherein uh, by default you can add uh, users manually where uh, you can click on add user and add, fill out all the details and add a user you also can import users my code trainers will be sharing the documentation on uh, what are the file formats that are allowed to import uh, inside zoho directory which will also consist of other options that are available when you want to import users inside zoho directory then uh, you also can delete pending users when you send invitations uh, there might be chances when uh, the uh, users do not accept or uh, they do not uh, respond to the pending uh, pending user emails that we are sending or the invitations that we are sending in that case you can delete the pending users you also can reinvite the pending users wherein uh, you can uh, send another invitation to the pending user uh, notification or email will be sent again then you have the export user option where you can export all the list of users that are uh, that are there in the zoho directory now that we have seen how users are being added let's also see about admins and roles in zoho directory now admins are uh, people who are uh, given uh, different privileges according to uh, the roles that uh, they play now in zoho uh, directory you have uh, different admins uh, that play different uh, roles as well as you can create your own roles uh, and define them as well now you have the system roles where uh, you can use those roles that are already defined and then you also have the custom roles where you can define uh, what kind of uh, permissions that you are going to provide for that uh, admin or role and then uh, you can uh, go ahead and give access to uh, users who will be uh, using uh, or who will be accessing applications which are uh, being given permission from the custom roles then we have the system roles right i was talking to you about the system roles where you have the organizational owner as the first system role and this organizational owner uh, is someone who has opened an account uh with uh, their email address that person becomes the organizational owner now that person can uh, can go ahead and assign the organizational admin they can perform all actions in the admin panel and you also have the application admin now you have a host of applications that uh, you can use in zoho directory right now that you can add in zoho directory and maintain in zoho directory now when you add a lot of applications you need to maintain what what applications uh, who is using what kind of access is being provided to each of the applications all this can be maintained by the application admin and then you have the help desk admin the help desk admin uh, 
they manage the users information wherein you have hundreds of users who are added to uh, the organization and uh, and users also get added to the organization on a regular basis right now all these users will be given uh, permissions for different applications and the security policies might vary and those details will be managed by the help desk admin now for us to uh, make it more simpler to manage these users in zo directory we have something called as groups now by using groups you can group users uh, together and you can give out a uh, permission sets uh, you can provide access to that group enforce a different uh, security policies and for multiple users you can simultaneously do that when you are having a group that has been created now there are two types of group that uh, you can create one is the collaboration group another one is the department now department is nothing but a structured hierarchical uh, formation that is been uh, created in any organization where you have a hierarchy that has been followed where you have the head and the uh, subordinates under the head of the department now in a department uh, you can't have uh, users uh, who are existing in multiple departments now for that you have to uh, start a collaboration group now if you have a collaboration group you can have uh, users from multiple departments inside a single group that would be called as the collaboration group now in zo directory once you create a group you can provide conditional assignments now when you provide conditional assignments it uh, negates uh, the time consuming task or mundane task that you do on a regular basis where you need to assign roles uh, you need to assign uh, the uh, permission sets for different application now if you have already uh, preset all that with conditions that you are assigning to you can just add uh, the uh, users into a group which has the conditional assignments already predefined which would make the process more easier right now once you already have uh, groups which have the conditional assignments or preset conditions defined you just need to add uh, the, the the pertaining user to that group now with that you will be able to uh, make the process of adding users inside uh, the platforms uh, more easier now let's take a use case of uh, the zilka manufacturing company there is a new uh, employee who needs to be added inside uh, the uh, inside zo directory now this person needs to have uh, access to zo uh, zo click for internal communication uh, with uh, he needs to handle custom applications so he needs to be given access to uh, zo creator he needs to be given access to projects and many more applications right now for him to have all the access to all these application keepers needs to be added as an individual user inside uh, the zoho directory now once you are added as an individual user you can just be added to a group which has all the preset conditions defined right now once uh, you do that the whole process becomes much easier right now in the demonstration that we'd be showing we will uh, show you how easy it is uh, to handle users uh, in zo directory as well as in zo creator and let's also try creating a group assign a group to a user and see how uh, it reflects in zo creator as well let's get into the live demonstration and you can see we have added a user uh, before which is abhinaya kg right now i'll get into the zoho admin panel now here you have uh, users that have been added and all the other kpi kpis that are required uh, when you are an uh, organizational admin you have all the very important kpis like uh, total applications that are being handled how many groups that have been created and uh, who, who have logged in uh, recently all the very important informations have been defined over here right now once 
you have a dashboard like this, you can easily get information on a day to day basis by just looking this at this dashboard. Right now, let's get into some of the important tabs that are there. Now, under organization, you have an option to uh, edit the organizational information. Now, this organizational information can be edited by the super admin only. In the top right corner, you have the edit option. You can click on it and you can uh, change the company's information, the primary locations, the contact information if you want to and update it uh, if there are any changes that have been made. Then in the top, you have a, the next tab, which is the work location. Now, if you have uh, multiple work locations for a single organization, you will have different employees who are working in different locations, right? Now, it is very important to add all the locations over here under uh, the work locations so that you can map the uh, required uh, users that are being added inside to the right locations that they are working in. Then you have the designation over here. Now, under designation, you can add more designations and when a user is being added inside, uh, a proper designation can be provided to that user. In the top right corner, you have add designation. You can click on add designation and you can add a designation over here. You can click on existing users and you will have a list of users uh, that we have added and you can add the user inside. Now, over here, you can see we have different designations that we have added. Now, you also have custom domains where you can map the custom domains to Zoho directory. We'll be talking about that this in detail in the coming sessions. And then we have applications. Now, in the applications tab, you can add the applications that are being used uh, by the organization. Now you can add application in the top right corner, click on add and you'll be, uh, you can see a host of applications, which are Zoho applications and third party applications, which can be added by clicking on this add button over here. Now, once you add it, uh, you will uh, view the applications uh, in the application space over here. And you also have the manage tab in the top, right? You'll click on manage tab. And you can segregate the applications that uh, you are using into uh, different tabs. Now, let's say you want to have uh, the Zoho desk and other uh, ticketing tools inside a single tab. Now I can just name it as desk tickets. And I'll choose the app as uh, Zoho desk and I click on add. Now, Zoho desk has moved out to desk ticket. Right now, let's say you have a financial suite of products that you are uh, using. Now you can create a new tab with all the financial suite of products and that can become another tab. Right now you can use this manage tabs to create that. Next, we have the users. Now with the users, you can see uh, as soon as you get in, you have the uh, user that we just now added. Right now that is that is from the Zoho creator account that we just now added over here, right? Now, when you are adding users uh, inside Zoho directory directly, you can get into add user in the top right corner and you can give out all the informations and add the user. Now, if you want to add more information from the existing information that is being captured, you can do that by clicking on the custom field option over here. Now, when you click on custom field option, uh, you can uh, type the field name, the field type where you can give out uh, different data types can be selected. And uh, you also have uh, the uh, default value and you also have character limit, which can be set depending upon different field types that you are uh, selecting. You have uh, the option of the character limit. Then you also can have this uh, field as mandatory or if it contains any uh, health information that can be enabled over here as well. And the encryption will happen automatically. You also have an option to give out tool tips, which would guide the user to enter the details inside the custom field. Now I'll enter, uh, I'll add a new field as blood group. 
blood group and I'll uh, give out the field type as text and I'll click on add. Now, once this is added under custom fields, uh, you will have the blood group that is being captured uh, when a user is uh, being added inside uh, the uh, Zoho directory, right? Now, this is how you can manage different fields over here. Now, if you want to uh, delete uh, fields, if you want to change uh, the options that we have, we have just now seen, if you want to keep it mandatory, you can check this box and uh, the blood group uh, field would get mandatory, right? Now, now let's get into the next tab, which is the admin tab. Now with the admin, as I told you before, you can uh, give out a different uh, system uh, roles that can be defined. You have the organizational owner, organizational admin, the application admin where he or she has access to the application options. With the help desk admin, you have the options uh, of mod modules that can be accessed which are users and the security modules, right? And according to your requirement, you can add roles as well over here. The top right corner, you can click on add role and you can add your customized roles for uh, your organization or your organizational specific roles. And over here you have assign admin, right? You can click on assign admin and you can add a user over here. Let me add Nivedita Raju and I'll add that user as the application admin. Now here I have options to manage uh, the admin where they can give out a different uh, accesses, can be specific applications or it can be all applications. I'll click on all applications and click on assign. And this is a new admin that we have assigned, right? Now I'll get into the groups. Now. Let's create a new group over here and I'll name the group as uh, production. Now the, over here, I've created a new group called as production. I have two options. One is collaboration group. Another one is department. If you want to create uh, different departments, you can go ahead and create uh, departments over here. And when a user is added inside, you can add the user into different departments. Now, if you are creating a collaboration group, you can go ahead and create a collaboration group over here with uh, different uh, moderators and uh, you can add the member as well over here and click on add. Now, once you click on add, you have a group that you have created, right? Now, before I get into the conditional assignment where I can assign apps for this group, let me get into the users right now inside users i have uh sai kumar moralidharan over here right i'll click on this option and you can see for this user i do not have any group or application that has been defined right now i'll get into the group i'll get into the group that we had just now created and i'll add uh, the conditional assignment over here right now i'll click on assign for Zoho creator over here, we have a Zoho creator and I'll click on assign over here. And now I have an option to apply condition to all the users or I can overwrite roles assigned manually to the users. Now I'll go with the second option uh, for the demo purpose. I just wanted to show how uh, the apps are being given access to. Now I'll click on all members all users and here I have an option to select the application. I'll select the Zoho Creator application and you have you can see these are all the list of apps that uh, you can see inside the Zoho Creator platform over here, right? Now I'll provide the manufacturing application access. When I check this box, it says the roles that I need to define. We had created the vice president role in the beginning, right? Now I can define the vice president role for uh, this group. And I'll also define uh, the uh, permission as the quality control head, right? And I'll click on save over here. Now, once this is saved, I'll click on done. And I'll click on save over here. And this rule will get assigned to the 
a group that we had created called as the production group right i click on assign and you can see zo creator application has been uh, added to uh, this group now with zo creator uh, also you we have uh, assigned the application with a specific permission set right now let's say i want uh, this uh, user sai kumar murlidharan to be assigned uh, to that specific application inside Zoho Creator with the specific permission set and role, right? Now, in that case, I need not go ahead, uh, get into the application, define the user. I just need to get into groups. I can just assign uh, the group that uh, is that we just now created production. Click on done and let the role can be member. I can just click on assign and we have the production a uh, group that we had created being assigned to that user right now once uh, this is assigned you just need to get into the uh, users in zo creator and you'll be able to view the uh, application over here just give me a second while it uh, loads get into the groups we have added the member yeah you can see it just it just took few seconds and uh, you can see the application being added over here right now this is the same uh, in zo creator as well you just need to reload and uh, you can uh, view the user being added inside uh, the uh, users in zo creator now, what if I, if I want to just, uh, you know, disable uh, the user who has been added inside the group, just this user, right? Now, I can disable this option for uh, this user and that would get reflected in Zoho Creator over here. I'll just reload this uh, page and you can see you have uh, the same user being inactive, right? Now, if I activate the user over here in Zoho, in Zoho Creator, that would get reflected in Zoho directory as well. Now, this is how just imagine you have, you can see over here, uh, you have uh, this user being again active. Just imagine you have hundreds of uh, users and you are you have created uh, groups of uh, 10, 10 users. It would be very easy for you to assign applications and uh, define permissions and roles over here, right? Now let me get into the presentation and let's discuss few key pointers that you need to note. Now, as soon as uh, a user is added inside the Zoho directory, uh, a license uh, will be automatically provided to that user who is uh, being added. And if that user is being deactivated uh, from Zoho directory, they will lose all access to that account. And when you deactivate a user in Zoho directory, it will not reflect in the SAML apps that you have assigned them to. When you are creating SAML uh, apps, uh, you would have assigned uh, users, right? You should always remember to deactivate the users in the SAML app as well when you are deactivating a user in Zoho directory. Now, these are uh, the upcoming sessions that uh, we have uh, planned. Now we have the uh, learning table series, which is the month on month free webinar that uh, we conduct where we concentrate on the uh, industry use cases that uh, we will be, uh, that we develop from scratch. We have applications which we develop uh, from scratch where uh, we will be showcasing uh, the application, building the application for the non-for-profit industry and uh, we'll also be providing the uh, ds file to all the uh, attendance attendees so please do come uh, and attend the session scan the qr code register for uh, the session and attend the session as well and we also conduct uh, the same uh, the creator tech connect series on october 10th uh, 9 pm the same time uh, you can scan the qr code and uh, join the session which would be the part two of uh, the uh, zoo directory and zoo creator series
Now for the learning table series, uh, we will be uh, sharing uh, the uh, DS to all the registrants. So you can go ahead and register. My co-trainers will be sharing the link, links in the chat section. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, share it to your uh, colleagues as well. Now we also have an academy that uh, we, a course that we have uh, started where uh, my co-trainer will be sharing the link for uh, the same. Now this course has all the previous uh, you know sessions that uh, we have uh, done uh, for uh, zo uh, for the creator tectonic series where uh, we have uh, all the sessions that we have done this year uh, being available over here you just need to uh, register and uh, you'll be able to go ahead and uh, view the uh, sessions you just need to sign up and then you can uh, view the uh, sessions for free now you can ask your uh, questions in the questions tab. My co-trainers will be answering your questions. While you answer your questions, we also have uh, the online training that happens on a weekly basis. Uh, this online training is where you uh, we train uh, for uh, we train participants for uh, the amount of three days, and uh, we also provide a certificate. Uh, we also provide uh, the free certification exam after uh, the training is done after three days. Each day you uh, we will be training for four hours. We'll be covering uh, different uh, topics in Zoho Creator. We have two types of training, business user and associate uh, uh, developer training, stage one and stage two training. The stage one training is for business users and the stage two training is for associate developers. You can uh, register uh, to the trainings uh, we have a 50% discount that is uh, that we are providing for uh, the September month. Now, please do go ahead and uh, register. My co-trainers will be sharing the uh, links for the same in the chat section. Uh, thank you all uh, for uh, your participation. Uh, I'll be uh, closing uh, the uh, session now. I hope uh, it was an interesting session. I'll meet you all in another uh, session uh, in the coming month. Thank you so much for all your participation. I'll be ending the session now.